Vladimir Putin is using his country's imperial past to rally the people. Sunday was a perfect example. It was the 31st of July, which is Navy Day in Russia. Its history is pretty interesting. The original Navy Day dates back to the late 1600s. It was established by the Tsars of Russia. Two centuries later, in 1980, it was abolished by the Soviet Union. Vladimir Putin brought it back. In 2017, he reintroduced Navy Day through a presidential declaration. You can understand why. Putin is an admirer of Russian imperialist power. He's also a classic cold warrior. So celebrating a strong Navy is on point for Putin. On Sunday, he arrived in the imperial capital of Russia, St. Petersburg. He oversaw a two-hour-long naval drill on the Neva River. Dozens of warships and aircraft were on display. After inspecting them, Vladimir Putin delivered a short address. He did not mention Ukraine. But he did talk about dominating the Black Sea region. We have openly outlined the boundaries and zones of Russia's national interests, both economic and vital strategic. First of all, these are our Arctic waters, the waters of the Black, Okhotsk and Bering Seas, as well as the Baltic and the Kuril Straits. We will ensure their protection firmly and by all means. The key here is the capabilities of the Navy. It's able to quickly respond to anyone who decides to encroach on our sovereignty and freedom. How does Putin plan to do that? By upgrading the Navy. Once again, it is on point for the Russian president. He is an avid admirer of Peter the Great, the Russian monarch who founded Russia's Imperial Navy. On Sunday, Putin praised Peter the Great. At the same time, he announced some upgrades of his own, hypersonic missiles. It will suffice to mention the latest Sircon hypersonic missile systems that have no equal in the world, for which there are no barriers. Their delivery to the Russian armed forces will begin in the coming months. The frigate Admiral Gorshkov will be the first to take up combat duty with this formidable weapon on board. Before inspecting his fleet, Putin signed a naval doctrine. Three points stand out from this document. Number one, it singles out the United States as the biggest strategic threat to Russia. Number two, it identifies the Arctic as a new theater of focus. And number three, it aims to make Russia a global maritime power. And for that, the doctrine hints at securing more foreign bases. Now, this doctrine reveals Vladimir Putin's thinking. The West believes that he's stuck in Ukraine. But the Russian president is clearly thinking about the long term. His naval doctrine talks about the Arctic, about foreign bases, about containing U.S. influence. Doesn't sound like a leader who's stuck. At the same time, there was no mention of Ukraine. Why is that? Perhaps because the Black Sea Fleet has underperformed. On Sunday, a makeshift drone struck their headquarters in Sevastopol. At least six Russian soldiers were wounded. Reports say Ukrainian insurgents may have carried out this attack. Back in April, Russia's Navy suffered another setback. Their missile cruiser, Moskva, was sunk by Ukraine. In the month of May, two assault boats were hit by Ukrainian drones. Do you see the trend here? Five months on, Russia has not established naval supremacy. The Black Sea is still contested waters, and the result is this. Cargo ships are unable to sail through the region, especially ships carrying food grains. Russia and Ukraine export 33% of all wheat in the world. Most of this trade goes through the Black Sea, but since February, that trade has stopped. The world was staring at a major food emergency. Thankfully, last month, there was a breakthrough. Russia and Ukraine signed a deal to restart food grain exports. Today, the first ship set sail from Odessa. It was a Sierra Leone flag container called Razoni. It was carrying almost 26,000 tons of corn. On Tuesday, the ship will enter Turkish waters. It will be inspected by a team in Istanbul. And after that, it will sail for Beirut. The plan is to increase the shipments gradually. It will ease the pressure on grain importing countries like Egypt and Nigeria. Having said that, it's not a permanent solution. Such wartime agreements seldom last long. All it takes is one major escalation or one ill-timed statement. And this whole deal could fall apart. So the biggest priority is to end the war, not a temporary ceasefire, not a Black Sea trade deal, a negotiated settlement. But Putin's new naval doctrine suggests the opposite. He is fighting Ukraine. Yet he calls the U.S. his biggest threat. Tells you what's on Vladimir Putin's mind.
Vyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.